So, yep, yeah, that's the end of uh, me using this GPU. I mean, it used to be over there, but uh, we swapped it out and now we're running the 1390 Ti from Zoltec again. But I was so excited about using this GPU because obviously it's the new 7000 you know, GPU from AMD. 20 gigabytes of RAM, I thought, you know, much more affordable than some of the NVIDIA 3090s, 3090Ti's. I thought maybe this is gonna go as good as that one. Maybe I'm not gonna notice the difference. I had really high hopes, but as a creator, there is a few things that you need to know about this before you buy this for creator use. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. If you want to see some numbers and like how much percentage is one better than the other one that I highly recommend you check out the 7900 XT review where I go more in detail but this video I want to talk about more like the personal use case scenario where you've just used it what's it actually what does it feel like using right you're so used to using Nvidia hardware and then when swapping out what's the actual difference what what did I notice when when we edited with this one to be honest we didn't last much longer than a week using this one because it was such a hindrance on our workflow that we just thought look we can't do this anymore we're doing so many things again and we have to redo certain things so we just swapped it back pretty quickly i want to talk about the good sides first because obviously who likes bad news first right number one thing that we realized which was actually very very impressive even before we ran the 4019 there like as good of a card as you can get whenever you were exporting something in the background at the same time we're using premiere pro by the way in media encoder when there was a video exporting it was very hard to do editing at the same time your editing will just be laggy because a lot of the resources of the pc are in the background just rendering a video putting it all together ram cpu and gpu when using the 7900 XT, amazing thing, right? We were exporting something in the background. We always export very, very similar settings. Well, this time actually we were exporting a little bit higher settings, 8K, some of the 8K videos that we've uh, released recently, upscaling like 4K project to 8K. And we realized that editing actually didn't you didn't notice a difference at all and some of the timeline was like very very smooth and it was working fine when it was like simpler timeline just like cutting and we using a multi-cam timeline often and many cameras so that was working fine but that was only when we were using quite simple timeline i'm going to talk about more complex timelines in the bad sections or you know bad news section another thing that we realized there was no sound of the gpu it's a very quiet and very like well cooled gpu even if you're gonna be like doing blender rendering or something very very heavy gpu heavy because video editing actually isn't as gpu heavy as you might think it's most likely going to be bottlenecked by the cpu unless you're using davinci resolve then probably this is this is good but you know no noise completely fine no coil wind no nothing it was completely fine so it's good there right but at the same time i haven't really noticed a bad gpu apart from my gigabyte 2060 super that i'm using in my pc not my my this is the editing pc and then i've got a secondary one there as well that is quite loud but apart from that usually you don't hear the gpu as much let me know what you think is your gpu loud when you're video editing i'd love to know but the third good news what we noticed is the vram because you have 20 gigabytes in there that is really, really good because I'm often seeing up to 16 and a half gigabytes or something VRAM used in Premiere Pro. If you're DaVinci Resolve user, you're gonna use much more than that, especially if you do a similar project because DaVinci Resolve likes to use more VRAM. But it was good to see that because often when we're using even RTX 3070, that really performs very similarly in the video editing performance. We were bottlenecked by the eight gigabytes of VRAM. So to have 20 gigabytes, that was a really nice thing to see. And that's where the good sides kind of end. Now the bad news. When editing in Premiere Pro, one of the things we realized is that sometimes, it happened a few times. At first we thought, okay, it's just once, right? It's not GPU related, but everything else is the same. Like clean drivers on the GPU, no other drivers in there. We're using a Ryzen CPU and Ryzen GPU, 3950X on the CPU, 
and 7900X on the GPU. That's my editor Ween in the background. <laughs> Premiere Pro would just randomly shut off. I mean, it's no like crash message or error Premiere Pro quit unexpectedly. It literally just disappears. Like the programs that you're editing and then foo, it's all gone. What just happened? You go to autosave, obviously you've lost up to two minutes of what you've just done. And we thought, oh, pants the first time it happened. Second time it happened, you were like, wait a second, this has never happened before. Why is it doing that? Sometimes it would like kind of crash, it would save and then kind of say, look, we've stopped working. But then it happened th three times. And then I think fourth time we were like, no, we can't do this anymore. We're swapping back. This is ridiculous. So there's some kind of instability with the GPU and just the software and how this works. Cause that is the only thing that changed in the system. I'm going to leave the like specs of our PC in the description below as well. By the way, I did a video on this. Uh, when we built this so if you do want to check that video out you can you can you can see how we built this only now we're starting to see the age of it out of the story digressing so the premiere pro crashes well not crashes just like quit boom gone that was really bad secondly we saw a similar thing with windows it wasn't a blue screen of death it wasn't a black screen of death it was just like da 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 we're editing editing just gone black and then the pc is just restarting you're like oh no so sometimes that would happen. Now I'm not putting that 100% to the GPU, even though this was the only thing that changed. It has happened a handful of times over the last few years uh, to me as well, but it did happen much more when we had the GPU installed. So that was just weird, you know, to see that much in a week, we thought, no, that's ridiculous. And at first we were quite excited about the performance in Premiere Pro because when we were using just timeline and working with video, it looked like quite snappy and we were like, oh, look, this is quite good. And sometimes felt like, you know, even better than maybe some of the Nvidia cards. But then as soon as we load some like graphs on the screen, like you've seen maybe some of the CPU, GPU comparisons, we're just gonna load a lot of text on the screen and put some numbers and percentages and stuff on the screen. As soon as we did that, the performance was just like, absolutely unusable. You would just like click to edit, you would wait, wait, You'd wait some more, there we go. And then you like select to select the text. And then it would take some time, it would select it. It was just absolutely a horrendous, like uneditable performance. So we thought, you know, if you're using this as a professional, as a tool, you can't do that. And just the instability, sometimes it will run really good. And sometimes the same thing would just run really, really slow at the same time. So sometimes, you know, editing, we're using the same cameras all the time, right? Same uh, cameras, same multicam, but some of the video products, they're stored exactly in the same place, in the same drives, everything's exactly the same, right? But then when working with this, GPU we just realized that sometimes the same project even if you load the same project up again It would just suddenly be super super slow try to restart the PC nothing happens And then the next time you just put the PC to sleep wake it up again. Whoa, it's quite fast again So just the instability of performance sometimes being very good and very bad Not a good thing to see from just a tool that you want to use in a creator PC so the conclusion if you are a creator if you're a professional who does this for a living and not just a hobby if you're doing this for a hobby i think you have a little bit more grace to some of the parts you're training out and trying to find fixes with it and you you kind of you know tuning the card and you know so on you maybe have a bit more time where you can spend on just trying different things and finding like the solutions and things but if you're a creator where you, you, you're earning the living from it, for example, you're editing videos every single day or most of the week or something like that, 3D, 2D, great, or something like that, then this is something you don't want from your tool to be unstable, underperforming. You just can't rely on it, which is just a sad thing. And that's why this makes me really, really sad because I have been recommending AMD CPUs for years and AMD did big leaps with their 5000 series and absolutely woke Intel up again to like create something good. But now what I've seen from AMD recently is absolutely zero talk to creators. 
Now you might be commenting and saying, yeah, AMD did announce that the iGPU and the dedicated GPU, they can work together with the encoding and things like that. But I haven't heard any talks about that. I've seen the keynotes of that, but I haven't actually seen that in practice working. Obviously my CPU there doesn't have the iGPU in there, but whatever testing I've been doing, I haven't seen the iGPU used at all, even though we've used the 7950X, for example, with the 7900 XTX. If you haven't seen that video, feel free to check that out. But I haven't seen any talks about creators. Everything's about gaming and, you know, more frames per second, which just makes all the creators choose team green, right? But I would love if there was some affordable competition for Nvidia. And I think this is not hard to do. It's just actually spending some finances and some cash from the GPU budget or from the actual server budget because the server department of AMD is making absolutely buttloads of money. Um, it's much bigger than all of the gaming and other GPU, CPU departments altogether. So there's plenty of actually cash to spend a little bit of more uh, software engineering and driver updates to do this as a, as a creator. And we haven't seen the new series of pro line of GPUs out there. Obviously these are really gaming GPUs and you might be saying, look, AMD has the W series, uh, you know, pro series GPUs out there as well. And I'm like, yeah, good, but they're quite old. We don't have a refresh for this series now. And if you think about Nvidia, for example, then Nvidia had a big, big kind of appeal for creators as well in 3D video editing and so on in there, but we don't see that in AMD. So I've got no choice to move back to Nvidia and uh, that's about it. But if you are using AMD GPU, I would love to hear from you your experience, especially if you're using the 7900XT or the XTX, the latest graphics cards. What's your experience been as a creator? If you're running any of these, please let me know any of your video editing, photo editing, 3D application feedback. I'd love to know from you in the comment section below. I'll meet you down there. But if you are someone who's interested in building the best bank for buck creator PC, then there's a build guide in the description below. Check it out. There it is. Whatever budget you have, there's a PC build for you that you can have and build the best system for you possible. Everything's explained there. Honestly, it's just the best. I know this is because there's nothing like that on the internet. Check it out in the description below. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.